South Africa is a very water scarce country. We get about a quarter of the average rainfall of the rest of the world. At the moment, about 98% of our water resources have already been allocated. So we really are somewhat on the cusp of a water crisis in George. We came together with several partners, including South African breweries and GIZ and local farmers in particular, to start to talk about the water resources in the area, what are the challenges, and how can we start to solve those challenges. George is the only city within Africa where we can grow hops. So it's very unique for um, ABM Bev uh, in the sense that um, we rely on that for most of our hop supply in South Africa. Commercially, it's a very strategic location for us um, and that's why we've invested in this partnership. Probably the biggest challenge is around the uh, fact that there's a lot of alien vegetation growing in that catchment and alien vegetation sucks up an enormous amount of water. The problem with the invasive species is they outcompete our indigenous species. The most of the invasive species we have here come from Australia. The government brought in the black wattle in the 40s or 50s to use the tannin in the bark for the leather industry. I think this is a great partnership between AB Embev um, and the farmers, GIZ and WWF, as it's actually on the landowner to clear all invasive species off his farm. But AB Embev has helped and put money as well with GIZ and WWF to help clear all these things. The partnership with GIZ, WWF and SAB started off a number of years ago. It then evolved into a clearing project which we've executed for three years, very successfully clearing over 800 hectares of the region in this valley. Very important because in fact this project is releasing 40 to 60 percent water. So as many aliens as we take out, we're able to release that water. The aliens are a lot thirstier than our natural vegetation. And so by being able to take them out, we actually get all that water back into our ecosystem. My job involves the clearing of an invasive plants. We have about three teams that we are employing and we also have opportunities for additional contractors to come in as well. Through this we can then also additionally spread the benefit out to the communities as well. Training is a key part of the process and they also get mentorship as well. We also teach them how to manage their finances, how to be able to deal with the technical aspects of clearing and, and all of those things. Jobs are created by actual clearing squads that come through. On any given clearing day, we could have up to 14 squads of about 11 people. So those are predominantly unemployed. We try obviously to get a large contingent of ladies in the, the teams as well. My name is Nico Furi and I'm from Herald Wines and we farm wine grapes up in the Otaniko Mountains just above George. It's been getting very much dry the last four years I've been on the farm. The worst that some of the farmers in the areas have experienced um, for three generations, they say. The clearing activities in the area has been beneficial all round. We've seen better runoff with water after rains and we've seen the natural vegetation biodiversity improve. Well, as you can see, most of the clearing that was done on the farm is on this portion behind me. There's no alien vegetation there. That's the portion that was cleared. As a landowner and as a farmer, funds are really tight, so it really helped a lot getting the expertise um, from WWF and GIZ in and assist us um, as to where's the correct areas to start clearing. And also with that initial funding and help clearing, um, now it's just up to us to make sure that it stays clear. I'm excited, um, we're really seeing positive change on the farm, we're seeing positive change in the community, and we're really, really optimistic about what the future holds for agriculture in South Africa. We begin to see biodiversity coming back into our riparian zones. We find that water tables are becoming replenished. We find that there's more water available for our communities, for people who live further down the river systems. Even though GIZ is leaving, I think they've created a sound platform from which to develop additional partnerships. We have multinational companies like AB InBev coming in and saying by 2025, we want to put back each and every drop of water that we're extracting back into communities. And we need to find a way to do that. <laughs>